<laughs> However, many of you will have heard of the Taunton Cider Company. Ten years ago, it was in decline. In the last attempt to keep it going, they got all the old families who have worked for them for generations to revive the custom of wassailing their orchards. That following apple harvest was the best they ever had. And they went on to be the biggest cider company in Western Europe. So perhaps these old customs remind us of powers we once had but may be in danger of losing. Or perhaps they had such a fine time wassailing but they all worked a bit harder. <laughs> <laughs> That's for you, decide. Anyway, this story is in quite broad Somerset dialect, which as I said this afternoon to my audience, um, puts you in the position that I was always in whenever I had the pleasure of the company of Stanley, who would speak to me in Doric. <laughs> but I managed with the Doric, and uh, you're managed with the Somerset dialect. I'll give you a few words on the way. There was this hard-working chap, as was the eldest of a long family. So when his dad died, there weren't nothing left for he. Youngest brother gets it all. Spoilt young Osbird he were. And he didn't like his elder brother, he didn't like he at all. So all he'd let he have is his dad's old dunk. That's a donkey. And an ox that had gone to anatomy. That's a skeleton. <laughs> and a tumble-down cottage with two or three ancient old apple trees where his dad used to live to with his grandfur. But the older brother, he didn't grumble. He went cutting the grass along the lane and he fed it to the dunk. And Nick old dunk began to fatten himself up a bit. And then he rubbed the oxyside with herbs and he said the words, magic words. <coughs> and Nick old ox <coughs> began to perk his tail up and walk smart. And then he turned they beasts into the orchard. And from that day, they old apple trees began to flourish a marble. Well, they would with a manure, wouldn't they? But all this work didn't leave E no time to find his rent. Oh, yes, youngest brother had to have his rent. Dap on the dot, too. Greedy young guzzlebag. <laughs> anyway, one day, the youngest brother, he came into the orchard, he said, Now, tomorrow, till be Christmas Eve, when beasts can talk. Because you all know at midnight on Christmas Eve, animals have the power of speech. You knew that, didn't you? It goes back to that first Christmas in the stable when they were in speech to pass on the good news, all right? We all know there's a treasure buried hereabouts, and I'm all set to ask your dunk and your ox where it is hid to. So you wake me up just before midnight, and I'll knock a whole sixpence off your rent. And off he goes, greedy young O's bird. Well, as I was telling you, the next day, <coughs> Christmas Eve, and come nightfall, who should come wandering into the orchard but the little cat from down Tibbs' farm? Not much more than a kitten, there were. A dairy maid of a cat. Now, do we know what a dairy maid of a cat is? <coughs> I'll tell you, it's a black cat that's been dipping her nose in the cream. <laughs> and you know what they say about curiosity and the cat? Well, here I was in the orchard, owl light on Christmas Eve. When out the box, the apple tree man. And the apple tree man said, You get on home, my dear. This is no place for you tonight. There's folks coming to pour cider through my roots and fire guns through my branches. You get on home, and don't you come back here again till St. Tibbs' Eve. Well, the little kitten ran off with her tail stiff with fright. Properly scared she, the apple tree man, did. And her never went back in the orchard at nightfall again. Because we didn't know when St. Tibbs Eve were. <laughs> or anybody else, did they? I'll tell you, it's the night before St. Tibbs Day. <laughs> Whilst all this is going on, the older brother put a sprig of holly up in the shippen. That's the buyer, the cowshed. Give his dunk and his ox a bit extra to eat to last them through Christmas Day. Because he wasn't going to work on Christmas Day. Then he took his last jug of cider, filled his wassail bowl, after mulling it in front of the ashen faggot. Should be able to smell it as soon as it's poured in. And out to the orchard to give it to the apple tree. 
He was just pouring the cider down through the roots when out popped the apple tree man. And the apple tree man said, you look under this great diddicky root of mine and you'll find something to do with a bit of good. So he looked under a root and he found a chest of the finest gold. It is yourn and no one else, says the apple tree man. You put in the way safe and bide quiet about him. So he done that. Now you can call your dear greedy brother and tell him it is midnight. Well, the youngest brother came rushing out into the orchard in a terrible hurry push. And sure enough, the dunk was just talking to the ox. He'd a man that got a greedy bull that's listening to we so unmannerly. He'd a want we should tell he where the treasure's to. And that's where he ain't going to get it, says the ox, because somebody have a took he already. <laughs> and if you ask me, it served him right for being so greedy. And you know, that was the last words that they two beasts ever spoke. But even to this day in the West Country, we still wassail the trees that they may bear many an apple and many a pear, for the more or less fruit they will bring as we do give them wassailing. So here's to thee, old apple tree, that thou mayst blow and thou mayst bow, and that thou mayst have apples and mow. Hats full, caps full, free bushel bats full, little eaves under the stairs, hip hip! Hey! Here we come a wassailing among the leaves of green. Here we come a wandering so fairly to be seen. But now it's winter time, strangers travel far and near, and we wish you. And you a happy new year For mountain mass and mountain mass and mountain blooming here So we may have plenty of cider all next year Apples are in apples are in pretty bags And all in the cider Put out of every gutter all Well down there in the muddy lane There's six and old grey tops Starving out and shivering And licking his old chops so bring us out your table and cut it as you please And give us some great muscles, a bit of bread and cheese I have a little more, keep it is made of leather skin A silver shiny sixpence combine it's well within For now it's winter time, strangers travel far and near And we wish you and you a happy new year Here we come on wrestling among the leaves of green